and welcome back to the Dundee YouTube channel. I'm David O.C. and today we're reviewing something a little bit more unusual because it's an MG. They have returned to the market and we will be discussing a little bit more about that later in the video but this is the MG ZS EV. It's an electric vehicle and in this review we'll be talking about the battery size, how long it takes to charge and of course its range. However, at a first glance it looks really really good it's a family sized suv with an electric motor and there's not many of those on the market in fact the only one i can really think of is the mazda mx30 it's a little bit more premium however in saying that it's got a slightly smaller battery now the mg zs itself prices start at just under 29,000 euros and it is riddled with specs so it's great value for money and what's more is you can spend about 3,000 euros more and get the exclusive version which you'll get things like a panoramic sunroof and even some folding mirrors which is really really nice so make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as we go and discover the MG ZS and find out what it's all about now, the big question about electric cars is always to do with the battery size, the range, and of course, how long does it take to charge? The MG ZS EV, which admittedly is a little bit of a tongue twister, has a 44.5 kilowatt battery. That's effectively its engine size. So just like a petrol or a diesel will have a two liter or a three liter, it's all about the kilowatt battery. So 44.5 kilowatts, and that is good for a claimed 263 kilometers. Now, naturally on a cold day, batteries don't perform as well. So on a day like today, you probably only get 230 kilometers. It also depends where you're driving. On the motorway is generally less efficient for electric cars compared to around town, which is the opposite of petrol or diesel cars. Now. Let's talk about charging. So the MG charges through here. It just plugs in nice and easily. And when it comes to charging, so if you use a three pin socket, it's going to take about 12 to 13 hours. It's very, very slow. However, if you get a home charger installed, you're gonna half that to about six or six and a half hours. And then if you're charging on the move using a fast charger, you can get about 80% charge in just 30 or 40 minutes. Now the fast chargers are more expensive and we're doing a whole video about buying an electric car 101, which is coming very soon. So make sure to subscribe for that. However, if you were to charge it at home using the night rate, I've calculated that you could get the full 263 kilometers for about five or six euro, depending on your provider. That is pretty good. MG is now a Chinese brand, and truth be told, I don't have a whole lot of experience with Chinese cars. So when I first sat in, I was intrigued, but I was quite impressed. Now, it, you can't compare this to something like a Mercedes or an Audi or a BMW, because it won't have the finish, and it's not priced to have the finish like they are. But if you compare it to something like its Korean rivals, it really does stack up quite well. The overall finish is very good. The seats are electric. You don't get that standard in an Audi A5 even. The steering wheel is quite nice, a flat bottom. You've got eight inch touchscreen here, which we'll talk about more. But storage even is quite good. You have storage in here, drink holders or hand sanitizers as well. You've got a nice glove box, very plain, nothing crazy about it but it does function. And this being the exclusive, obviously has the sunroof, which is really, really nice. And actually brightens the whole car up substantially. The infotainment system is all based around this eight inch touchscreen display. And we'll call a spade a spade. It's not the most terrific out there on the market. The touch isn't as responsive as some other cars. However, it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which, suffices in fact it's more than sufficing it's absolutely perfect and it works really really well now one other drawback i will say is that sat nav itself doesn't actually have built-in nearby charging locations which nearly every ev i've ever driven before does have that so that's maybe one small drawback but other than that it's really really good and it completely serves the purpose that it has to serve over here then you've got a small digital display there with all your 
your general information of how much range you have left and all the usual insights into the car. You have an analog dial for your speed and then you have an analog dial on the right hand side for the percentage of power you're using. So it kind of works a little bit like a rev gauge, which is kind of nice and gives the old school driving feel as you're driving along. And other than that, the interior, there's not much else to say. The steering wheel does only move up and down. It can't move towards you, but unless you have notoriously short arms, that should be okay. And as I said, the, the seats are electric, which it's really impressive in here. And even some small little touches that remind you of an Audi and even these little vents here remind you of a Mercedes A-Class. The type of person who buys this car are most likely young mum and dads who don't necessarily have a massive commute. They might be doing the school run, going to their office, which is only 20 or 30 kilometers away. So chances are they might have a child seat. And now the door does open, it's plenty. However, the ice fix points are a little bit harder to find. And interestingly, they've put two ice fix points in the rear, meaning you can have two child seats, but you can't have two children in China. I actually think the law on that's recently changed. But anyway, let's talk about the grown up children. So plenty of knee room, and that seat is in my driving position. I'm five foot 10 and a half, and I do have loads of knee room. Decent headroom. The, the pan roof does eat into that a little bit. However, it's definitely worth getting that panoramic sunroof as it just livens the whole atmosphere back in here. Other features, a little bit of storage here, a USB charging point there, and that's all there is to it. There's not too much more. So let's go check out the boot. The boot opens with the MG logo, which is really, really nice. And you're greeted with 470 litres. Now, to put it in perspective, that's almost 100 more than a Volkswagen Golf. Now, in terms of load lip, well, there is quite a big one. However, you can actually raise the level of the floor to reduce that. And what's more is there's storage down there for your charging cables. And also you've got basically a pump should you get a puncture. Would prefer a spare wheel, but we'll let MG away with that. There's also two small storage pieces there. And of course, the seats do fold in a 60-40 split. And other than that, it's just a boot. It works and you can store your buggies in it. When it comes to driving the MG, you have to first look into its history and its heritage. Morris Garage, or more popularly known MG, was established in 1924 as a British sports car brand. To solidify its position as a sports car, MG set many records, the first of which was in 1931 when it became the first 750cc car to exceed 100 miles per hour. It then backed this up in 1957 with another land speed record of 245 miles per hour. This was only the beginning as then came the MGB GT. At the time it was the UK's most exported product and what's more is it was one of Car Fanatic's most favourite creations. All that said, you would think the MG handles phenomenally, that it's really fast and really powerful, but obviously this is a family SUV. Now what I will say is that motor, that electric powered motor, does put out 140 odd horsepower and being electric, it's like a light switch. So when you put the foot down, you do get pushed back into your seat and you do have three different modes down here, eco, normal, and sport other than a bit of throttle response there's not a massive difference between any of them in terms of handling it's no lamborghini but it will handle just fine the suspension it's probably not the softest in the world but weirdly there is a bit of roll as you go around the corner it's absolutely adequate is the is the word i use to summarize it and as a whole to drive it's really nice visibility is fantastic which is very important particularly if you've got kids in the car the heated seats are lovely there is only one setting on those maybe that's a small drawback the mirrors are plenty big plenty adjustable and overall to drive it's really really easy and obviously it goes without saying it's automatic 
um, as all electric cars are. There is actually, F1 fans will like the KERS, which is Kinetic Energy Recovery System. Now, what that means is it is regenerative braking. Now, if you don't know what regenerative braking is, don't worry, we will have a video coming very soon that's gonna explain all the usual electric car terminologies that we throw around in these videos. But long story short, regenerative braking or KERS effectively uses the electric motor to slow the car down when you take your foot off the accelerator. It does two things, it regenerates power, but it also saves the life of your brake pads. So right now you'll see, as I take my foot off the accelerator, we slow right down. And in something like a Nissan Leaf, you actually slow down to a halt. However, in the MG ZS, you just slow down to about five or six kilometers per hour. One other really cool thing about the MG ZS is the spec it comes with. Not only the infotainment and all those things, but as you can see here, there's active lane assist, which works phenomenally on the motorway. You've got adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring. These are all things, well, actually the blind spot monitoring is the extra, it comes in the exclusive pack, but the rest of it comes as standard. And you don't even get that as standard in a 60,000 euro Audi or an E-Class. It's amazing. It really, really is. When it comes to reviewing cars, it's important that we stay independent and look at the pros as well as the cons. So often in our reviews, we talk about three of our favorite and least favorite. However, in this review, I want to talk about potentially the elephant in the room because realistically there's nothing that negative about this car it's very very impressive however as i said there is an elephant in the room and that is the risk in buying one so generally speaking when i go to buy a car i look at a three-year-old one and see how much it's worth and that way i can roughly calculate my devaluation now MG is now a new product to the market, so you can't actually look and see how old a three-year-old one is. So that does add an element of risk. Now, the second part of the risk is that electric cars have a tendency, not always, but have a tendency to devalue a little bit faster than combustion engines. The reason for this is because A, they tend to be more expensive cars, and B, because they're in a very early stage of production, and obviously technology is advancing vastly every year. So come three years down the line, your car technology might be a little bit outdated. Now the good news is MG appear to be one step ahead and are offering a very low APR rate when it comes to PCP one. So PCP is personal contract plan. Now generally speaking, when a friend or a family member comes to me and says, I'm thinking about getting a PCP, what do you think? I generally see, well, if you can afford to buy the car outright, it's usually the cheapest option in the long run. However, if someone in my friend or family group were to come to me and say I'm looking to buy an MG ZS and the PCP rate's pretty good, I would say do it. And the reason being is because on a PCP, you're guaranteed an exit price. So basically you know the minimum amount of money that it's gonna, you're gonna lose or that it's gonna cost you throughout your ownership. And that peace of mind is very, very valuable. Now, because I am an optimist and I like to talk about the positive sides of life, I am gonna discuss three of my favorite things about the MG ZS. And number one is that it comes with a, wait for it, seven year warranty, 150,000 kilometers of warranted mileage, and that includes the battery. Very, very impressive. Number two is that MG Ireland have partnered with Energia to give their customers exclusive smart vehicle chargers. What that means is they can get chargers at home, which is fantastic. And number three is that everyone loves a dark horse and being completely transparent, wasn't that excited to test drive the MG. I mean, I thought, mm, it'll be okay. It looks a little bit disappointing. It used to be a sports car. Now it's a family wagon. But then I got it and I honestly am blown away. And when it comes to value for money, 
I think there's a lot of great cars out there. There's the Skoda Octavia, it's fantastic value for money. At the higher end, something like an Audi A6 is fantastic value for money. However, if you're interested in an EV and you don't want to be spending the big bucks, honestly, there's so much to be said for an MG ZS. And there you have it. That is done deals review of the MG ZS EV. I have to say I'm very, very impressed. And if you are thinking about buying one, then let us know in the comments. But I would say don't hesitate, maybe try and arrange a test drive if you can and see what you think because you might be surprised. Now, let us know in the comments what cars you'd like to see us review in the near future. We are determined at Dundee to bring you independent buying advice and to take all uncertainty out of the buying experience. Make sure to enjoy it. And of course, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.